ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ವಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರ ಭಾಷ್ಯ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರು ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೀತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವದ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮಂದಶ್ಚ ಮೋಕ್ಷಶ್ಚ ಮೃಷೈಭಮೂಢ ಬುದ್ಧೇರ್ಗುಣ ವಸ್ತು ಕಲ್ಪಯಂತ ದೃಗಾವೃತ್ತಿ ಮೇಘಕೃತ ಯಥಾರವೌ ಯಥೋದ್ವಯಾಸಂಗೇತ್ಪದರ see the translation bondage and liberation are attributes of the intellect which is ignorant superimposed upon the reality as the hiding from eyes by cloud is superimposed upon the sun in fact this immutable reality is absolute knowledge non dual and unattached <clears throat> topic is going on and now it is in the last stage the topic is bondage and the liberation bondage and liberation master says finally these are the attributes of intellect bondage and liberation both are the attributes of the intellect bandhascha moksha is but mudha mudha ignorant ignorant super imposed upon the self atma here he is giving an example like driga vrittim megh kritam yatha ravau there is weather cloudy weather forecast and we see sometime there is sun and there is not sun it is covered by the clouds so we say today sun is covered by clouds megha kritim kritam yatha ravau ravau means the sun so we understand we see say that today sun is covered by clouds but we think deeply and then it will come to know sun is not covered sun cannot be covered sun is much more bigger than the clouds so any cloud cannot the cover the sun this cloud covers our eyes our vision driga vrittim drig means our vision it is avritam covered our vision is covered by the clouds sun is not covered but it is said that sun is covered same yato advayasang chit etadaksharam 
the self, which is immutable, absolute knowledge, non-dual, unattached. It cannot be covered by any cloud. Same, our self is unattached, immutable, absolute reality, absolute knowledge. It cannot be covered. So here Guru is saying that Bandhasya Mokshasya, the liberation and bondage, it is not upon the self. They are not upon the consciousness. They are only in our intellect. They are just a thought. See, thought and things, both are different. Things are outside, thoughts are inside. Thought is our own creation. Things are God's creation. Objects are created by God. Objects are not our creation. Objects are creation of the God. But thoughts are the our creation. So things are outside. Thoughts are inside. And thoughts are more powerful, more strong than things. Things have no much power. Things have no much durability. Anything, it may be diamond, it may be stone, it may be iron, any object, no matter how strong it is, but time will kill it. No matter how strong it is, steel, how strong, strong is diamond, no matter, but slowly, slowly time will kill it, finish it. But thoughts are your creation. Thought is, I am in bondage. It is just a thought. Now I am liberated. So thoughts are your creation. Things are God's creation. And there are some schools, some principles of philosophy. They say, they say that you would be surprised. They say thoughts are actually things. They are wondering. Thoughts are wondering like very small, minutest particle of the dust. When you see you are in dark room. There is small hole, and sun rays, sun rays come from the that hole through that hole, and then we see there are so minutest dust particles. They are moving here and there. They are rooming. Same. There are some philosophy. They say thoughts are like the same. They are roaming everywhere. Sometimes they enter, they enter your mind. Same thoughts can enter others' mind. Same thought can enter others' mind. There are so much philosophy. They are agree that the things and thoughts are the same. But here, here we have to understand that things are outside. Thoughts are inside. Thoughts are more powerful. Thoughts are more strong. Time cannot kill. Time, ca time cannot kill. Time cannot finish thought. We have a thought. We have a conception. We have a notion. I am in boundaries. This is the boundaries. This thought. Time cannot kill. It will remain with you. It will travel with you wherever you are. Space cannot 
kill it. Time cannot kill it. This thought is always with you. I am in bondage. I am in bondage. Another thought will come. I am now liberated. Both are thought. And thought take place where? You know very well, thoughts take place in the intellect. So Sankarachari says, Bandhasya Mokshasya Mrishaiva Mudha Buddha Raguna. I am bound, I am bound, I am liberated. These are qualities of intellect. They are not quality of the self. Self is beyond of this. Now, next one. He says, Astiti Pratayo Yasya Yasya Nasti Tivastuni Mudherev Guna Veto Natu Nitesti Vastuna. The translation says, The concepts that bounded it and that it is not are with reference to the reality, only at tributes of the intellect. Never do they belong to belong to Brahman, the real eternal reality. In this verse, we have to understand for all stages. First state is waking state. In waking state, we see objects, we experience objects. Objects are there, you are also there. You are enjoying, you are suffering with the object. This is the, your waking state. This is, this is, this is asti. And when we go to dream state, there also, objects are there also. Only difference is, in, the dream, in this dream state, objects are certain. And waking state, objects are gross. So only different is they are subtle. And in waking state, state, objects are gross. But experience is very similar. Asti, asti pratyaya. Asti Pratya means this age. Asti means this. Pratya means knowledge. This age, this is this is chair, this is building, this is furniture, this is human being, this is tree, this is stone. Same process happens in the dream state. This is elephant, this is a horse, this is a river, this is a mountain. So in this, both states. Both states, the experience are very similar. When we go in deep sleep, in deep sleep, there is nothing. You were, but there is no any knowledge. In the morning, when we wake up, we say, I slept very well. I did not know anything. I slept very well. So in the morning, you can experience there was nothing. This is the third state. And fourth state, fourth state means samadhi, there is also nothing. Nasti. Here, see, Sankaracharya says, yesha nasti iti vastuni. So sometimes you experience something is, and sometimes you experience something now. So we experience presence and absence both. You can experience presence and you can experience the absence also. Sometimes objects absence and sometimes objects presence. You can experience both. But the self, the consciousness is not 
each eachness and not nothingness. See, let me explain it. You never experience that I am not. No one has such experience yet in the universe, and it will not going to happen. I am not. I am not. No. Any person cannot experience such experience. And I am. Once you have known that you are human being, the topic is over. We are not going to tell everyone, "I am human being. I am human being. I am woman. I am man." If you do so, the people will think you have some problem. You need treatment. So self. अस्तित्व प्रत्यय यस्य यस्य नास्तित्व प्रत्यय हा बुद्धे रेवा गुणा वीतो। So this is this is not this thought is only reference to the intellect. न तु नित्यस्ति वस्तुना they are not connected to the self. So every judgment intellect is intellect takes Good, bad. Every judgment, intellect takes, takes, takes. That is why Buddha Reva Guna Ubeto. These are quality of the intellect. Now next one. Atas Tau Maya Kritta Tau Bandha Moksha Guna Chhatmani Niskile Niskriye Shante Nirvade Niranjane Adhitiye Paritatve Brahma Vat Kalpana Kuta. explanation is continued now we are in the last point guru says see the first translation therefore bounded and liberation are projected up by maya and do not exist in the self as there can be no limitations regarding infinite space how can there be any limitation regarding the supreme reality which is devoid of parts devoid of activity sairen unimpleachable untainted and non dual see atah guru says therefore the conclusion has come Atta means the conclusion has come. Therefore, Maya Kritau Bandha Moksha, the liberation and the bondage, both are projections of Maya. They are created by the Maya. They does not really exist. Now, understand. An example he is given here. Vyoma vat kalpana kuta. Vyoma means the space. To make understand, Brahman as self. This example is very good. Very good. Vyom the space like Brahman. See the qualities about. Self, niskale. Space is niskale without parts. Space do not have any parts. Niskale, niskriye. In the sky, there is no any activity. No any action. Niskale. Shanti, quiet, non-dual, nirvade, unimpeachable, 
निरंजने अंटेंटेज अद्वितीय नंदुवल सो देर आर नॉट टू स्पेसिस दिस इज माय स्पेस दिस इज योर स्पेस स्पेस इज वन देर आर नॉट रियलिटी इन द स्पेस सो दीज क्वालिटीज इज बीइंग सेड इन द इन दिस कार सेम अद्वितीय परे तत्व the supreme truth the self is also same you cannot bound the space there is no any method no any system to bound the space no one can control the space and you cannot liberate the space nothing can be done with the space same this supreme reality the supreme reality the consciousness it also like space so it is beyond of the bondage and beyond of the liberation now next one निरोधो न चोत्पत्ति बद्धो न चाधक नाम मुक्षो न वै मुक्त परमार्थता दिस वर्ष वेरी वेरी ब्यूटिफुल दिस वर्ष दिस श्लोक इज अल्टीमेट अल्टीमेट यू विल नॉट फाइंड एनी वेयर लाइक सच थॉट अल्टीमेट ट्रूथ Paramarthata means absolute truth. Guru is saying to disciple, now I am going to tell you absolute truth, absolute reality. This verse in the scriptures, many places it written. This verse is in the Upanishads. this upanishad in mahabharat the same verse is in the yoga vasist and manduki karika and here na nirodho na chutpatti has see the translation there is no birth no death no bondage no spiritual aspirant no seeker after liberation no one will be liberated this is the ultimate truth this is the ultimate truth when we started vivek chunamani are when you are aware about the boundaries the first level people are they do not aware that i am in boundaries they are busy in their lives they are busy in the worldly life they do not have time to think they are engaged they are happy are unhappy but they are in the busy in the world for them there is no bondage no liberation they are like animals like they are living like animals like yeah they do not think anything like animals they begins same routine work eat ahar nidra bhay maithunans our scriptures are saying food sleep fear procreation these are very similar animals and human beings so there are much number much number of doyam who do not have any idea of liberation or boundaries they are living life a human being like animals no difference then second state comes 
many people becomes aware. My life is not like animal. My life has its purpose. It should be purposeful. So I have to get this my purpose. I'm not a, like animal. Then the people start their spiritual life. And they be taught that you are in boundaries. You have to get liberation. You are in boundaries. The world is bounded limitations. From that point, the spiritual life begins. From that point, the spiritual life begins and we started thinking about the religion, the spiritual life. Then we go to somewhere, any guru, any teacher, any master, and we go and surrender to him, her, and we would say, I want liberation. In the very beginning of in this text, you see that procedure, procedure, procedure is the same. And we go to master and say, I want liberation. I am in boundaries. So liberate me. And Guru says, don't worry. Mahabhaisht. I will save you. This is the procedure in second level and then all spirituality begins. You may be wrong path. You may be right path. This is another matter. But you are striving. The seeker is striving. This is the seeker who started the journey. And for that seeker, there are so many philosophies so there are so many religions, so many sects, scriptures, gurus, for that seeker. And finally, some will succeed. They will liberate. This is the procedure of human journey from humanity to godliness. First become human being. I am not only like animal life. I am something different. I am something apart from the animals. My purpose is very different. Then we start our journey. First, we experience I am human being. My purpose is not worldly purpose. Then we start towards the godliness. All scriptures comes, all masters comes. Then finally some succeed and they liberate. This is the procedure. But here, lastly, the Guru says, now I am going to tell you absolute truth. Absolute truth. What this, this verse is very, very close to my heart. Na nirodho na chot patir na baddho na chasadaka. Na Guru says, O disciple, O dear, now I am going to tell you absolute truth. This, these are my last words. No nirodho na chot patir. He says, there is no birth, no death. Na nirodho na chot patir. There is no bondage. There is no any spiritual seeker. There is no seeker after liberation. And lastly, he says, there is no liberated. Very high thought. I would like to tell you a small funny story to make understand and want, don't take in otherwise because story is funny and it is a very uh, re, 
relevant in this verse. There was a washerman. He was lived. He was living in a small town. There was a small river, just two miles away from the town. So he would go every day for washing the clothes. It was routine. He had few donkeys. Donkeys for carrying the clothes. And he was a poor, so he had not a proper house. He had a boundary, and that boundary, his donkeys, and the person himself also was still. In the night, the donkey was were roaming here and there. They disturbed every night his sleep. He becomes so frustrated, but he had no choice. He had not any separate room to sleep. So he had to sleep with the donkeys. Every night he becomes disturbed, frustrated, but without any option. One day he was walking by the river and he saw there is a monk, a sannyasi mahatma. He was living a very small hut. The washerman went there and did namaskar and said, I am a poor person. I have a problem. And Mahatma, actually Mahatma are supposed to have all solutions. The Mahatmas are supposed to have all pro- sol- solutions. Any type problem you have, no matter, he can give you pro- solutions. So Vasarman said, I have big problem. The Swamiji said, what is your problem? He said, actually, I have donkey and I don't have rope to tie with them. How to tie? And without tying, they bother every night to me. The monk says, monkey, donkey, to tie them. He said, actually, I don't have ropes for every donkey. Thus, Mahatma said, you, at least you have one, one rope. He said, yes, I have one. He said, okay, it's enough for all donkeys. How? He said, in the evening, and you go to take one rope and tie the donkey with neck and with the post. And very easily, very smoothly, you untie that rope. And same way, same manner, you tie another donkey. Tie in neck and the post and open. Again, and same manner, you tie every donkey. But Wasserman says, it is okay, one tie. Then if I open it, I untie it, the donkey can understand. Mahatma said, don't do arguments. Just do whatever I am saying. He said, okay. In the evening, he did. As he said, he tied his neck of donkey and with the post. And very quietly, very calmly, he opened the rope and same, he tied another donkey, then another donkey, another donkey, and finally he took the rope and slept. The donkey was very quiet. They were sitting with the post. He slept very, very calm, quiet. He got very good sleep. 
in the morning he wake, wake up woke up and he thought now i should go to river and he started to donkeys taking to the towards river but donkey were not ready to go anywhere they were wandering around the post but they are not leaving to the post he thought what has happened i think mahatma ji has did mahatma ji did some mantra so he went to the mahatma ji and said mahatma ji i am poor person who have done something mantra with my donkeys they are not leaving the my house mahatma said what what have you done with them have you tied oh, yes in the night and the morning have you opened them it's been opened but why there is no rope mahatma said you know there is no rope but donkeys don't understand there is no rope but he said evening it was dark it could be understand it could be pretend that there is rope there was dark but now there is light donkey start not so much donkey any one can understand there is no rope mahatma says do what am i say and he went and he was laughing himself and to the donkey also and he did same process open every donkey started running this is the story of everyone mahatma said just create of thought of conception of notion of boundaries give a thought just give a thought of boundaries nothing have to do another thing we have got thought of boundaries in reality there is no liberation there is no birth no death no bondage then no seekers and no liberated all is the drama all is the, if you says i am bondage then scriptures will say you do this and this see the scriptures problem see the masters problem if you go to them and you say save me i am in bondage he will say okay no problem i will solve you i will liberate you but he knows there is no liberation because you are not in bondage namukta na paramarthata so this is the last statement which was given by the guru now sakal nigama chuda shant siddhant roopam par midamati guhiyam darshitam te mayadya agamat kali dosham kam niramukta buddhim shashuta bad kritvam bhavai tavya mumukshum see the translation considering you to be a seeker after liberation void of tense of dark age with a mind free from desires i have today to reveal to you again and again as i would to my own son the supreme and profound secret the inmost essence of vedanta crown of all vedas so now guru is saying few words about disciple and relation between disciple and guru guru says considering you to be a seeker you are a real seeker of the spiritual 
and you are free from bodily desires. You are free from the this Kali Yuga, the dark years. You have quality. So Suttavad Asad Kirtam Bhavitva. Guru says, I spoke to you. As you are my son. So Suttam. This is the natural tendency the father gives his valuable belongings to the son. It is a natural tendency. Every father. You remember the story of Kathopanishad? The father of Nachiketa was doing a yagna. He was doing a, some rituals. In that rituals, whatever you have, you have to give to the Brahmanas. He was doing the rituals. But he was father also. So because of that tendency, he gave huge less cow to the Brahmanas. And by label cows, he was put aside to the Nachiketa. This is the nature of the fathers. Every father does it. The master said, whatever valuable, whatever most valuable thing I have, I give you. And that is Nigama. Nigam Sakala Nigam Chuguda Siddhanta Siddhanta Rupam. Whatever I had given to you, it is not a very, very, very common thing. Sakala Nigam. Sakala means the all scriptures. It is the essence of the all scriptures. See, if you want to be liberated, you are after liberation, after moksha. Then the first thing is, what is the path? How to get liberation? Who will give? Then we started our spiritual journey. We start go here and there, read some books, some study, do some studies. But which path should be taken? It is very difficult. And there are so many religions, so many masters, so many scriptures. Every scripture is saying, I am the right, I am the correct. There are so many confusions. And you cannot read every scripture. Sakala Nigam Chuda Swanta Siddhanta Rupam, he says, this Vivek Chunamani is the essence of all scriptures. Tadam idam ati guhiyam. And this is the very, very most secret. See, secret, the objective world is not secret. It is open for everyone. Objective world is common for everyone. Sun in the sky for everyone. It is nothing secret. Himalaya is standing for everyone. Nothing secret. Gold is gold. Nothing is secret. Secret begins from the subtle world. When we start thinking about spiritual life, then first level comes, it is about Dharma Shastra. Dharma Shastra means the scriptures who will say to you, do this, don't do this, eat this, do not eat this. This is the Dharma Shastra. Do's, don't do's, eat, minus. You can say that spiritual minus. They will teach you spiritual minus. This is the good, this is not good. 
in first level the scriptures will tell us this is good for you this is not good for you this is a secret then comes upasana bhakti devotion in the devotion the matter is not only with you now matter is connected you and god between both in karma yoga the matter is connected only with you only with you you do and you experience but in the second level the matter is not with only you it is connected between you and the god devotion this is the more secret here sankaracharya says ati guhiyam ati guhiyam is the absolute secret and the spiritual life the wisdom of the self the absolute guhiyam secret i have told you because you are the eligible eligible for this and i told you again and again asakrit asakrit means asakrit in previous studies we were studying and topic is same repetition is there repetition is there guru said i have done it intentionally again and again same thing i did now next one iti shrutva guru vakyam prashrayana krita anati chatena samanugya see the translation hearing, hearing the words of the teacher the disciple prostrated to him with reverence and obtaining his permission went his way free from bondage now we are going to conclusion guru said now i have done everything to you and you are liberated i am not required see the master's intention see the difference teacher can give you information to you but teacher can not transform to you master makes transformation to you teacher will give more and more more information he may make you cultured knowledgeable but nothing will change if you are your nature is anger you have lots of information this information will not make any change in you anger will come restlessness will remain but master will make changes master will transform you it in his intention is transformation not information so guru says now time has come iti shrutva guru vakyam prasreena krita anati the disciple did prostration then asamanu gyato and he got permission from the guru yeyo nirmukta bandhana and he went to go nowhere he was free he may go anywhere or not now next guru reva sadananda sindhu nirvigna manasha pavyan sudham sarvam vichchar nirantaram and the teacher his mind immersed in the ocean of eternal bliss forever wondered about dearly blessing the whole world so disciple went this side and the master also went other side the work has done the only work was this communication this dialogue it has now over so disciple one way and master is another way master is also in what condition sada ananda sindhu nirmagna manasha 
he was like intoxicated intoxicated in the brahman pavan vasudham sarvam and like such must wherever they go they makes purify the earth they makes the holy place holy place means what holy place means like such person where they live they makes holy places and now next one ityacharyasya sishyasya sambhaden atmalakshanam nirupitam mumukshunam sukha bodho papatte see the translation thus by means of dialogue between the teacher and the disciple the true nature of the self has been indicated to the easy comprehension of seeker after liberation now it is being said what the purpose of this book what the purpose of this text in sanskrit we call it sambandh anubandh chatushta four meanings the first thing is what the subject in this book, in this text what is the subject so subject is atma lakshanam indication of the self so make sure in your mind in vivek chunamani only one topic is there atma lakshanam the description of the self there may be the topic of about disciple there may be topic about the master there may be a topic about the cross body a subtle body but the purpose is self description atma lakshanam how has it come acharya se sishya se sambhadena the dialogue between master and disciple this was the medium to describe the atman nirupitam for whom for whom mumukshunam he says mumukshunam for who are after liberation the seeker of the liberation who has desire of the liberation for them sukhop bodho papatte if they study vivek chunamani they can understand this reality very easily now next hitam idam hitam idam upadesh madriyantam vihita nirasta samasta chitta dosha bhava sukha virata prashanta chitta shruti rasika yatayo mumukshavo ye see the translation may the seekers after liberation appreciated this salutary teachings those who have cleansed themselves of the fence tense of the mind by observing the prescribed method who are indifferent to worldly enjoyment who have serene mind and takes a delight in the scriptures in previous verse it was said mumukshuna for the seeker of liberation here in this verse he is giving more some information about that person hitam idam upadesh madriyantam this vivekchuna mani is very beneficial for every seeker who can read this who can understand this here he is giving six points first is vihita nirasta samasta chitta dosha the one the seeker should have purified minds second is the one who do not want bodily pleasures bhava sukha virata third one is prashant chitta the one whose mind is quiet calm 
So Tirasika. And then comes the, who had interest in scriptures. And another is Yatiya. Yataya means the who can make commitment. Your commitment is required. Deeply commitment is required. And Mumukshavah, the who want liberation. These six qualities are needed for who wants to understand this reality. And in lastly, Sansara Dhani Tapabhan Kiranot Bhut Daha Vetha Shinna Nam Jalakan Chaya Maruhubi Branta Prapari Bram Yatam and Tyasan Nasudam Budim Sukakaram Brahmadayam Darshaya Hitte Sasan Karabharti Vijayate Niravana Sandaini. See translation. This is the last verse. For those who are afflicted in this sansara by the burning pains caused by the scorching sun rays of the threefold sorrows and those who in the delusion roam in the desert in search for water for them this is the glory, glorious message of Sankara pointing out the ocean of nature the non-dual Brahman within E.G reach in order to lead them to liberation. About this text, Sankaracharya is saying himself, this text is Sansara Dhonita. It is like the jiva who is roaming in this world, here and there, and they are suffering. They are suffering always. And he's giving an example like someone is roaming in the desert. Very hot, sun is hot. And he was thirst. He was so miserable. He was looking at water. But there was no water. Then Suddenly, some people comes, and he says, "Don't worry, I will show you. There is a very clean, sweet, cold water. There is oasis. Just see there." So Vivek Chudamani is like this. We are wondering. We are suffering. We are roaming birth to death. And we are always inside, from inside, from outside, we are suffering. Bhanu Tap. Here are three types sorrow Adhyatmic, Adhidaivik, Adhidhoti. Sometimes they are body level, sometimes we are unhappy in mental level, sometimes because of this, sometimes because of that. So we are always miserable and we are always looking for some solution, but we don't find any solution. And that time, like Sankracharya, people comes and he says, don't worry, I will give you a solution. And this solution is Vivek Churamani. It is like a source of, in desert, it is like source of sweet water, clean water and cold water. It is white like nectar. So the people who are suffering from the death, from the birth, for them, this Vivek Chudamani is like a ocean of nectar. You should eat, you should digest. Esa Sankar Bharati Vijayate Nirvan Sandhaini. This Vivek Chudamani is giving, can give you Nirvana, the moksha. This is always useful for everyone. So such, finally, we completed this divine text. And uh, actually, this is not just completion. This is my side completion. And what the next uh, programs, 
they will be announced om purnam adah purnam idam purnat purnam udachyate purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva vasishyate om shanti 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 shankaram shankaracharyam keshavam vadarayanam sutra bhashya kritau vande bhagavantau puna puna ishvaro gururatmeti murti bhed vibhagine vyoma vadd vyapt dehaya dakshina murtaye namaha om shanti shanti shanti